Here at my studio, on the set of Dog Talk, I experience so many wonderful, inspirational stories about dogs and their owners, the connection, what value that these dogs bring to their owners' lives. And I think one of the most inspirational stories is about a little dog named Goldie. Does Goldie deserve the award for being a hero? I'll let you be the judge. I'm Melinda Laufenberger. I'm the executive director of Autism Oklahoma, and we adopted a Visenji mix named Goldie who changed our lives. When Joy was about two, we recognized that she wasn't really talking. They say autism is pervasive, um, which means it affects kind of all of your systems in your body, but it's also pervasive in a larger circle to your family, your immediate family, you know, your extended family, your friends, because you become very isolated. Um, you do what you need to do to make your kid happy, to make it the world tolerable, and in the process, a lot of times families lose their own identity. You know, Joy always loved animals. We could tell that animals were important to her. Um, and uh, so we adopted a dog that was a year old, and we thought, just try it for a week. We'll just try Goldie and Joy for a week and see how it works. Goldie walked in the house. Joy walked up to Goldie. They were gone. I was so thrilled having Goldie around. Um, when, or with Goldie, it felt like as if I had an automatic friend. Like, because making friends, especially when I was young, um, around that time, I had no clue what to do. She was just enthralled. I mean, she just was so excited to have a dog. Joy didn't talk a lot. You know, she would talk like, you know, maybe two sentences. Our master bathroom is, shares a wall with Joy's bedroom. And we started hearing her at night talking to Goldie through the wall. And we're like, oh my gosh, they're having like a long conversation. And that's how Joy started really talking. A lot of people who love dogs became attracted to me. And like whenever I take Goldie on a walk or go to a new place, um, kids will come over and confront me and Goldie out of interest and out of sheer joy because they want to see this dog and I get to talk to them about who Goldie is and how um, how important she is to me. Once she had Goldie we we leveraged her interest in Goldie to help her to do a lot of other things. For example I got her in an art class and every single day in that art class she would draw a small picture of Goldie at the top of her page and that would allow her to have enough courage to do the rest of the art. So it was like, you know, as long as you can, you can think about Goldie, be with Goldie and have a little bit of latitude, then she could tolerate new things. We realized what a comfort Goldie was to Joy and how much it opened up her world. So, so then we got her certified as a canine good citizenship. Then we trained her as a therapy animal and Joy would go take Goldie to the library and read with kids. And so she was giving out because of Goldie. We decided to go ahead and train her as a service dog. And then we took her everywhere. Goldie has been to, our first trip was to SeaWorld. She's rode all the rides at Disney World. She's been in the White House. It became one of the best decisions that we made. And now today, um, Joy is a senior. She's majoring in biology at UCO. She drives, she has friends, and Goldie is absolutely still in the center of her life. When I step back and look at how Goldie changed Joy, and then how Goldie changed our family. It's remarkable. But then when I also think about how Goldie and Joy's relationship also impacted us having Autism Oklahoma, and how Autism Oklahoma in turn has affected thousands and thousands of families, I can't believe it happened like that. Being able to understand and get to this far was something that I never thought would ever happen. And for it to all happen because of a dog, 
and having a dog in my life. Never, I would never think that would ever happen. Goldie and I are both mutts. <laughs> um, because she is special, I know I'm very special too.